guys, how's it going? Today I'm working on my very last decorating project for Christmas. So I'm gonna be decorating this mantle that's right behind me. And I've kind of put this one off because it's such a huge space, it's such a huge mantle, and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. Um, so I've been kind of going back and forth on ideas, and I honestly don't know how it's gonna turn out today. I've got lots of different supplies I'll show you. I think it's gonna be pretty, but it's kind of hard because I really like to use real, real stuff, like real evergreens, real, real plants and this gets quite warm up here so you know i've got some philodendrons up here let me just turn the camera around real quick so there are the two philodendrons and they've done really well up there on the mantle because they're potted and they get watered on a regular basis and they're up off the stone they're not sitting directly on the stone so the the stones here get kind of warm not hot just a little tiny bit lukewarm and then they get pretty darn hot down here toward the actual fireplace portion there so I couldn't really imagine putting a fresh garland. I really wanted to, and I was gonna try to push it and do that. Uh, but I just thought, you know, it's gonna dry out in like two days, and then it's gonna pose a huge fire hazard, and I just didn't really want that. So I picked up a lot of different faux like picks from the craft store that I'm gonna try to be using, and I'm gonna do a couple of um, fresh arrangements, but again, they'll be up off of the stone, so I think that they'll do really well. And I chose all things that last a long time as cut flowers. The other reason why I've put this off is that this fireplace in particular kind of intimidates me because I think the color and the stones, it's not something that I would have chosen. It's a little bit, I mean, this part of the house was built in the 80s, so it's a little bit dated, um, and I love it. I love having a fireplace, and you know, I wouldn't get rid of it just because of the way the stones look, but it's something that I would love to reface in the future and do something with wood, warm woods, carved kind of look. Um, so it's, it is kind of intimidating to me. I don't know if you guys have things like that where it's just an area that you're like, ah, it's not exactly what I would want, so it makes it a little bit hard to imagine how you want the end product to look like. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. Um, let me show you what I've got to decorate with. Okay, so first of all, it's pretty bare, like you've seen. I did have a couple of pictures there, but I stole them for a different place in the house. Our house is very picture poor right now. It takes me forever to decide on pictures. This one is a Prometheus. I actually found this print at an antique store and had it custom framed in an antique frame. And I love it, but that's why it takes me so long to get pictures on the walls. So what I did is I found these really cool gothic arch frame mirrors at Hobby Lobby. They were originally $70 a piece, and I got them for $35 a piece. They had a 50% off sale. So I snagged those, and I'm going to see what those look like up there on either side of the mantle. And then here are a lot of the other things I picked up. So I'm going to just kind of fake a garland on the mantle using... Some of this flocked pine with the neat pine cones and I got one two three I got nine of the pine cone picks and those were 50% off at Michael's and then I got some of these these are like flocked frosted evergreen kind of with the little pine cones and then a couple bundles of white kind of glittery branches and then I gathered up a bunch of glass candle holders so these are the only two that I own I got these as a wedding gift Aaron and I did they're actually real, they're real crystal. And the rest of them my mom had in her decorating closet, so I'm just borrowing those from her for now. And then I picked up a bunch of taper candles and I burned through candles like crazy, so I bought a bunch of them because they were all 60% off. I got some uh, cream colored ones. These are from Joanne Craft Store. Russell, you stay out of that tree. Hey. Oh, you're a naughty kitty. And then I also got some silver tapers there. So let me take you up to where the other supplies are. So on either side of the fireplace, in front of the mirrors, I'm gonna to put together a living arrangement. I already put together one last night just because I had some extra time. So I'd still need to put together this one here. And here's my mess from last night. I did not even bother to clean it up. So first of all, we'll start with one of these gray clay pots that I got at the garden center. And then I went to Home Depot and got just a plain bucket out of the paint department. I got a bunch of junk in it last night. Uh, but that is what will make this watertight so I can actually create something that will stay alive. So then I've got some wet foam I'll be filling the bucket with, and getting it all um, soaked with some water. I've got seeded eucalyptus here. I've got some gorgeous mums. I was going for hydrangeas, like white hydrangeas, but I think these are so pretty. There's a couple of stems of magnolia. I've got baby's breath, and then somewhere in here, right here, 
There's some white Ostromeria, which lasts forever in cut arrangements. And then over here, I've got some pheasant feathers that I picked up, I think at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. I was gonna use them in fall display and I forgot I had them. So I think that they look pretty worked in, kind of like mirroring the backside of the magnolia leaves, kind of that brown color, really pretty. And then I've got some insanely glittered branches that make a huge mess. So that's why I'm doing that all up here. And one other thing in the back sun porch, I brought up my leftover evergreens from decorating outside and there's some pine there, some noble fir, and then I've just got some like little random things. I've got some holly and boxwood in there and some pine cones I gathered from underneath our Colorado blue spruce outside. I also wanna explain this fireplace a little bit because I've showed it just very briefly in other videos, um, but it is a three-way fireplace and it's very neat. I really, really like it. Erin and I enjoy having fires in here. We keep it going pretty much 24 seven when we're here. So of course, this is the great room side right here that I've already showed you. This is where Aaron edits and does all his work so that he's by a window and we could kind of work in the same room together. So if you go this way, this is kind of a little hallway. It leads to a little TV, like a little sitting area here. There's a little like <laughs> Harry Potter door underneath the staircase. There's a bathroom here. This is kind of our storage for fire starter. Um, so we, when we get packages and stuff in the mail, we cut the cardboard pieces into really small pieces and use them as fire starter. And then this is our wood trolley. We bring in wood from outside. But you can see this is one side of the fireplace right here. Um, eventually, I'd like to figure out a different area to put all this stuff. So I could put a really cute little dresser with a lamp and make this a little bit more cozy and not so utilitarian here. Let's go around the other side. So to the right of the fireplace, this is our kitchen. So the kitchen side is brick, which is really fun. I love it. I actually didn't clean the glass over here this morning. I usually always clean the glass every day, but it was still pretty warm from last night's fire. Um, but I love that I can be standing. This is where I cook, right over here. And it's just such a warm, cozy feel. And it actually does shoot quite a bit of heat in here. So the heat comes from these little holes right here. And see in the front side, there's a ton of little holes. And the funny part about this fireplace is that when it really gets up and going and it starts to um, get to a certain temperature, it starts blowing heat out, out of the holes. But you can see that some of them are plugged up right here. Well, occasionally one of the holes will start whistling and you have to take one of these little plugs out and try every hole until you figure out which one's whistling and plug it up. And sometimes it takes a while, like a good five minutes to figure out which one is whistling. Okay, so the first thing I need to do to actually decorate is to ask Aaron to remove these clay pots with philodendrons in them. They're quite heavy, so I'm gonna have him move them to a different area of the house. And then I'll clean off the candle holders and we'll start with the uh, mirrors first. Oh, I really, really like that. That is so pretty. Let me back up so you can see the light fixture. I just had the chandelier installed this summer. It took me about a year and a half to find a light fixture that I really liked for this room. And I think it's gorgeous, especially with the Gothic art frames and the gold frame there. But I think that's what it needed, something not square on the top, something that had a little bit of a different design. Next step is finishing the second flower arrangement so I can get those put right in front of the mirrors. All right, so first things first, floral foam is gonna go in the little reservoir. You want it to fit really nice and tight because this is what's gonna act as our frog to keep all of our stems in place. So there we go. So these pieces of foam have soaked up just about as much water as I think they're going to. They might soak up a little bit more, but I pretty much filled this thing because I don't really wanna to have to go fill it anytime soon, but these will really help keep moisture in and keep the flowers happy. All right guys, so I'm just gonna set the camera up and speed this part up, because I don't know how long it's gonna take me. both are and I think they turned out pretty even so it'll look fairly balanced I love all these colors together so much 
So now I need to go find Aaron and see if he can haul these into the great room for me. All right guys, let me give you a close up here. Look at how perfect that is. I just wanted the mirrors to kind of be peeking up above, which is perfect. I think the level is good with the, you know, level of the middle painting or picture there. I think these arrangements are so pretty. I love them so much. Okay guys, so now I'm going to start in on all of this stuff right here. I'm gonna probably start with the bulkiest stuff first, so I'm gonna start with the pine. I'm gonna remove all the tags and just disperse them out evenly on the whole mantle, and then we'll see how it looks. And then I'll probably add in this one and then maybe some white branches. And then in the end, I will probably do candles last, I think. Oh, and one other thing that I think I might try to work in are these really cool, um, these are LED pine cone lights from Gardner Supply. They sent these to me, we opened them in a recent mail time. And I think they might look really pretty, lit up, kind of like a nice little sparkle up there worked into all the garland. Here are the results of just the pine with the little twinkly LED pine cones worked in. And I think it looks really pretty just like that even. I actually really like the flocked look up on this mantle. I was gonna do, you know, like I said, a, a real one. And if I would have done a real garland, it wouldn't have contrasted as nicely. It would have been a lot of dark greens, um, which my walls in here are kind of a dark green gray and then the stones are a little darker, so I think the flocked was the way to go. I'm done placing all of the picks. Doesn't that look snowy and beautiful? So now I'm gonna do candles, and I don't think I'm gonna add as many as I thought I was going to. Like, I don't think I'm gonna add any around here, just because we've got the little pine cone lights now, and there's a lot going on down there. So I think the only place that I really need candles is on either side of the picture. So I will work on that and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's what it looks like pretty much put together, minus the candles being lit and the lights, the pine cone lights being on. And I really like how it turned out. I'm seeing now that I need to space these candles a little bit better. I really like how these look on this side. So I used four on each side and that's it. I had actually prepared to put about 18 up there. <laughs> so you just never know how things are gonna turn out. I probably have glitter all over my face too at this point. It seems like every decorating project I do, I get glitter just everywhere. But it's so pretty when it's done and I love the glittery at night when it picks up the Christmas lights and lamp light. It looks so pretty. So the thing I really do like about how this ended up is that most of the things I used up there, I can reuse again. So the only things that I would have to replace if I were to mimic this look are the fresh flowers and the candlesticks. That's it. So all of the um, lights, the uh, picks that I used as kind of my garland, the pots, the mirrors of course, all of the, and even the glitter sticks, the glitter sticks I used in the arrangement, I'll pull those out and save them and use them some other time. So I really like that about using faux, faux things is that you can use them from year to year so you don't feel like it's a wasted investment. Okay, so the last thing I need to do then to show you guys kind of how it all comes together is light the candles and turn on the lights. So there it is all lit. I'll turn off the lights here in a second so we can get maybe a little bit of a darker perspective. Um, it is pretty light outside right now. You can see it's kind of gloomy and gray, but it's still pretty bright in this room. But isn't that so pretty? Love the candles, of course. That always adds a tremendous amount to any display. But these little pine cone lights are just about perfect, aren't they? So there it is a little bit. Oh, there's Russell. <laughs> you see him right there. There it is a little bit darker. And I'll try to get some shots tonight when we've got like true uh, evening kind of conditions, but I just think it's so pretty. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? You attacking me? Hey. All right guys, so that is it for this video. I just wanted to show you how I was decorating the mantle. I don't really know if I even have any tips for you guys because I'm not a professional in the decorating realm other than I knew I wanted it to be balanced. So I don't really worry about odd numbers in this case so much. So I've got two of the pots, one on each side, two of the mirrors, four candles on each side, and then I just split the amount of picks I had up between kind of the three levels. 
So the two side levels and then the one in the middle. And then as always, whenever I'm doing a flower arrangement or I'm picking out like the picks that I used, I always try to get multiple different textures, um, especially if I'm going kind of monochromatic like I did with the garland. I wanted that long needled pine in with the kind of fur look that's a lot shorter and then the branches, the glittery white branches. So you've got some really definite difference between the textures that you've got going on. That always helps make a display or an arrangement look a little bit more dynamic. So anyway guys, hope you are having a fantastic holiday season and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye. How do you feel about it, Russell? How do you feel about that mantle? Do you love it? Do you love it, cute man? You are so cute. Look at you.